So basically, we have two types of database systems, right? We have the OLTP, which is our typical online transactional processing system that we're used to, that we're familiar with. It's the database engine. When someone says SQL Server, we think of transactional processing. It's what most companies use SQL Server for. And then we have OLAP, or online analytical processing, and that's the data warehouse component. One, you have uh, a normalized structure with the relational product, and one you have a denormalized, and it's a more flat. So why, in 2012, is there an additional model for the data warehouse? Right, so now we have two models for the data warehouse. We have the traditional multi-dimensional one, the one that we're familiar with when someone says OLAP. And then we have this relational tabular model. And why, why add a second data warehousing tool? Well, uh, I think ease of use would be the number one reason. Now, Microsoft says they're not getting away from the multidimensional traditional OLAP, where we have our cubes and, and uh, just because of the, because it can scale so well. Uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out, but I, I can tell you that the, uh, the new model, which is BISM, or Business Intelligence Semantic Model, uh, is gaining a lot of ground, and because of its uh, simplicity and its Excel-like environment, it's really, uh, I think, will probably at some point be the direction for um, data warehouses in the future. So we'll just have to see. So the first thing is when you install analysis service, it's just like when you install SQL Server, you install a relational engine, you install the analysis services. Well, you have two options. And here, I, I captured a screen print. When we install analysis service, and here you can see we have the 2012 setup. We have the analysis service configuration. I have obviously gone through and checked analysis services. And now you can see we have tabular mode, right? So we have multidimensional and data mining and tabular mode. And this is our, when we install this, this is our, and installs a business intelligence semantic model. So let's go here and we can see here we've got three database systems, right? We've got here is the typical relational model, right? The one we're so used to. Here is the multidimensional. This is the traditional analysis services with the cubes and everything we know. And this is, and you can see it's got the cube, right? So up here it's got the database, kind of the little star icons. They all have the little icons because they're all lit up. But now we have this little database container, we have the cube, and now we have this kind of tabular, this Excel, that could be these four or whatever, that two, yeah, it looks like four, uh, tabular model. And this is our, obviously I named it BISM, our semantic model. So, what do we do? Where do we start? Well, we start with, like we do with, with any of our analysis services project, we start with SQL Surfer data tools. So let's light up SQL Surfer data tools. And now we create our new project, new project, and it'll give us some options here of things we can work with. All right, so you can see right away, we have analysis services, tabular project, report, and obviously which one we're gonna, you know, we're working with the tabular. Uh, you can see we have the multidimensional, and now we have tabular. So we're gonna do the tabby one. Tabular, tabular example. Yeah, that's great. And now, and now what? We have nothing. Well, we have our kind of our solution here, and we have our model. And we're thinking, well, what's next? Well, we've got to go get some data, right? So up here we have our import data source. So we got to import some data. And now one of the great things about this whole tabular model is we can import from so many sources. It's not most of the time, especially for those that are building this uh, for an enterprise environment, right? You're going to build, you'll probably connect with SQL Server. You'll do this probably the most often, but there are a ton of other Teradata, you know, whatever, um, including the traditional 
multidimensional uh, things that we can connect to to mash up our data. So what we're going to do with SQL Server. Next, SQL Server, we'll do some authentication. Uh, what is the server name? We're going to connect to this guy. Obviously, I do not have this memorized, or I wouldn't have to cut and paste it. Copy. Let's come down to him. Uh, mm -hmm, yep. And let's go to our database. We will look at the DW VentureWorks 2012. Yes. And now we want, now it's going to ask us to specify a Wonder username and password. Now, notice it doesn't say SQL Server. Right, so it really wants the when you install e, the the BISM portion, this this portion, come down here and look. When you install this, you can see it asks for add a current user. Well, it adds a Windows, right? Notice that it adds a Windows user. So we have to go find that Windows user that we're using, and I don't have the thing memorized, so I'm going to have to go like this again. Oh, I guess I could have done that because I had it copied. So let's go with. Uh, Let's go. Mike wasn't it Mike? Might have been Mike. It wasn't Mike West. Let's go with Mike West. Let's go with the password. I think it is. That worked. So now that we're past that, select the tables from the list to import. All right. Let's go get some tables. This is from the AdventureWorks, obviously DW twenty twelve. So let's go get. Uh, let's go get the product. Uh, let's give. We can give it a friendly name product. We can also import some uh, select related tables, which is nice. Well, tables related is going to give us four. All right. We're going to preview. We can look at this in here, and when we, we preview and filter, you'll notice something. Wow. What's that look like? That's right. It looks like Excel for a reason. So we're going to finish this, and it's going to pull and pour all this data into our tabular model for us to work with. All right. So details, great. No, close. And now at the bottom, we have our data to work with. And you can see we have product, right? And all the tables that were related to product when we pulled it in. All right, now that we have our tables done here, let's do a quick DAX expression, data analysis expression so we we can here up this is our data portion right here and then below it is where we we can put it here you can put it anywhere actually but I don't know it's a habit to put it here let's create a quick DAX expression so let's go total sales total sales is let's see that uh, equals let's sum it up sum very good it gives us that helps us intelligence all right nope nope hit the enter and hit the enter. All right, so there, let's close. We need a bracket here. And now what column? Say we're going to sum up what column? Let's sum up, uh, how about sales? Where is it? There it is. Sales amount. And now we want to close that. And we want to come down here. And we should get sales amount. And it's not formatted very well. So let's look at the properties on that. So we click here. We've got our you know, as we can see that the black box were highlighted. Let's come over to properties. Let's give it a context. It's not general. Let's format it to money. And there we go. Now we have got our total sales there. Now we can deploy this so that everyone can see what we've done, right? That's why we deploy to this, our database over here, to our new, hey, to our new BISM data right database. All right, so let's come up to the tabular example. Let's right click. Let's deploy. And it is deploying to that database. And in a minute, we'll use Excel to look at our model. Now, we could have looked at our model before with Excel, but we'll wait and deploy. And all right, so we're a success. Now, when you come up here, we can look at our model, but let's come over here very quickly and look at the databases. So here's our tabular example. This is the one we just deployed to this instance, right? So all the organization can use, right? Anyone now can connect to this via Excel. If we come back over here, let's open up Excel. Where is our 
SSDT. Let's open up Excel. Yeah, that's great. And we open up Excel and look, we have our total sales and total sales. So that was from the back sales. And we have our, I don't know, due date, discount amount, doesn't matter. All right, so notice how quickly you can ignore this. I obviously, I'm, <laughs> I didn't really think think through creating. Uh, I just wanted to show you the editing, the think through creating the, you know, the specifics of this, uh, how I was going to use the, the pivot table. I just wanted to show you the deployment and how easy it was. So now this is. I mean, how long did that take? Was it this whole thing ten minutes? That just took me ten minutes to create a a warehouse, a, a, a cube basically, well, a cube, I'm not sure you can call it a cube, um, that we can use and that's usable throughout the organization. It would take you a lot longer to do this with the multi-dimensional. And not only that, we have Excel now. We have a front-end tool uh, that's easy to work with that can point to that data source that everyone is familiar with and everyone knows. And Familiarity is a big component of, I believe, why this familiarity with Excel and familiarity with tabular data is a big component of why this whole model was created. And I think it will bode well for Microsoft and certainly for many organizations. All right, thank you.